What's going on, guys? Will we go to fighting secrets once again? Today we're going to be talking about burning fat, burning calories, getting back in fighting shape. Maybe you put on a couple of extra pounds during the holiday season, and you're thinking to yourself, "Man, I got to get back in fighting shape." Don't worry about it. We got you here. All right. Um, what do I know about nutrition? Taking off the extra pounds. Well, I used to be 300 pounds of fat. And uh, here's the before and after proof picture right here. Um, not to brag, but I know a little something about how to burn fat. And I've learned along the years a lot about nutrition. I use it for my own personal sagely advice to keep myself in shape. I'm 37. It's not as easy as it once was to take off the pounds. I'm not old now, but I ain't young either, right? I'm in that awkward like middle, I don't know, middle age. I don't think I'm quite middle age, but I'm pretty much there. So. It's more awkward for me now to burn fat, so I have to work even harder, and I have to, more importantly, work smarter. So it forces me to be good about nutrition. We're going to talk all about the best and easiest methods to burn fat, whether you're in your 50s, in your 20s, or anywhere in between, or even, honestly, like in your 70s. It doesn't matter how old you are, if you're a guy, if you're a girl. If you're a this, that, this, like whatever freaking thing you are, this is going to work for you. I, I, I won't guarantee it because that's opening myself up to some kind of liability more than likely. My attorney told me, don't fucking guarantee anything. So I won't. But I'm telling you this, it more than likely will work for anybody. All right. And these are old school, like proven ways. I have seen it work not only for me, but for anyone else that I've ever put on these. I don't want to call them diets, but plans it's worked for just so quickly so quickly and i've seen guys like in a matter of months shed crazy amounts of like weight and go down like three pant sizes it's insane how well this works and i'm going to share it with you today before i get into that we're going to talk a little bit about science we're also going to dispel some myths about fad diets i'm going to talk about all the different fad diets all right I'm going to discuss intermittent fasting. I'm going to discuss high fat, low carb diet. I'm going to discuss um, the paleo, uh, not the paleo. What's the new one? The carnivore diet. Oh, you only eat red meat. We'll get into it. All right. So if this interests you, stand by. Let's jump into it. If you don't want to lose any weight, I ain't offended. All right. Go do whatever you want to do. Turn it off, order a pizza, whatever, whatever. All right. But if you want to really get some good, solid insider tips tricks and tactics that i'm pretty sure will work <laughs> then let's get into it guys guys before we get into this let me ask you a quick question have you ever pictured what it would look like if somebody actually came at you with a razor sharp knife intent on killing you do you actually have the skill set to be able to survive through an extremely violent confrontation like this listen don't worry if he answered no, okay? Because you're being honest with yourself. The answer that I'm really looking for here is nobody does, okay? But there are some secrets that we can share with you that will aid you in hopefully surviving through this extremely violent and unfortunate situation and hopefully walking away at the end of it a little less injured than the other guy. GutterFightingSecrets.com is the website. Let me share some insider secrets and tips with you things that have actually been used on the streets and worked for people to go home to their families at the end of the day after an extremely, extremely violent confrontation. GutterFightingSecrets.com is the website. Check out our counter knife course. We've also got offensive knife, knife courses. We're going to teach you some really sneaky stuff, stuff that you really won't find elsewhere that I've had to travel quite a long ways and go through quite a bit of training to distill down into some really simple tips, tactics, and secrets for you guys. All right, back to the video. GutterFightingSecrets.com is the website. Enjoy the rest of this video, guys. Cheers. All right, so we're back after that obnoxious advertisement. Who's that a-hole that put that ad in the middle of my video? I don't know. Anyway, guys, let's talk about insulin first, all right? Um, what the hell is insulin? Well, it's a hormone. Why are we talking about this, Will? Tell me how to lose weight fast. We got to talk about this, all right? We got to talk about this before we talk about everything else. Insulin is a hormone. 
essentially what it does is it aids us to intake all of the different sugars that we imbibe when we eat food and utilize that those sugars for energy. Think of it as like a hormone that basically takes the sugars and makes them okay enough for us to utilize as energy. Now, insulin is not inherently bad. Every time we eat, it produces an insulin response. What we ideally want is a smaller insulin response. Now, the thing is, when we eat sugar, when we eat refined carbs, potato chips, white bread, things like that, this insulin, instead of having a, a slight peak and then going back to normal, the insulin has a larger peak. And then it comes down and eventually goes back to normal. Okay, not a huge deal in and of itself. When we don't eat a lot of refined carbs or high sugar stuff, okay, sometimes the insulin spikes, it comes back down, and hopefully we go to normal, right? But the unfortunate thing is, if we're sitting there all the time eating stuff we shouldn't, like you know, white bread and chips and junk and soda, our insulin is always doing this, always doing this, all right? And that causes our body to get waked out because it's not meant to have stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, fruit, eating fruit will spike your insulin because there's a lot of sugar in it. But again, our bodies aren't meant to sit there and eat fruit all freaking day. Our bodies are really meant to sit there and eat, you know, like meat and types of vegetables, really. So when we sit there and put all this jacked up sugar into our body and our insulin is doing this all day, can lead to some really bad things. Now, another thing about insulin is when our insulin levels are spiked, we can't burn fat. It's not possible to burn fat when our insulin levels are spiked. So in order to burn fat, we have to have a very low insulin response or none at all. That's why whenever you do your cardio, in order to lose fat, if you're not doing cardio for the sake of making your cardio better, if you're doing cardio to actually burn fat, you want to make sure that your body is not inducing an insulin spike. So going for a run after you eat is not a good idea if you're trying to burn fat. That's why we always recommend that you do cardio in a fasted state. We're going to get into this, but let's finish talking about insulin, okay? So when the insulin is high, or has spiked, we're unable to burn fat. It comes back down, and hopefully, hopefully, it goes back to a baseline level. What we ideally want is to eat foods that are going to not produce a high level of insulin, right? So what can we eat that does not produce high levels of insulin? Well, natural fat foods do not produce a high level of insulin. Think about it like this. When you eat things, and it has fat with it, it, produces less of an insulin spike. That fat, and we're talking good fats, we're not talking like fat that you get from like, I don't know, cakes and shit like that. Like not bad fat, but good fats, like olive oils, like animal fat, right? Things like natural fats. When you, yogurt, right? Dairy. When you eat things like this that are anabolically, anabolically naturally, occurring fats, well, that produces less of an insulin spike. Also, when we eat something that is sugary, that is high glycemic index, and we put something that contains fat with that, it can help negate the insulin spike. Think of fat as something that doesn't produce a lot of insulin and also can negate this insulin from actually spiking as much doesn't give you permission to sit there and eat sugar and then say, well, I'll also have some, you know, yogurt with it. And that'll just negate the whole freaking thing. Like, no, it doesn't work like that. It just helps. But that's a little cheat code from me to you. I really want you to keep that in your back pocket. If you are going to sit there and eat some junk, all right, have some almonds with it, have some whatever, something in a little bit of a good hat, a good high fat content. And that will help negate that insulin response. But Let's go back to eating the yogurt, eating things like this. That's why for breakfast, you'll com commonly see 
fruit paired with yogurt is because that yogurt will help negate the heavy insulin spike from the fruit. So we want to ideally, when we do eat, eat things that are not going to spike the insulin, like steak, for example, it's got fat in it, right? And protein. It's got fat and protein. That's perfect. It doesn't spike the insulin a lot. Yogurt, it's got fat and protein. It doesn't spike the insulin a lot. That's perfect. So when we start to think about it like this, like from a nutrition point of view, and we're always told growing up like fat, 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 it's bad, it's bad. No, it's not bad. It's really, it's not that bad for you. Like healthy fats are not that bad for you. So when you do eat, you're going to want to eat something a little bit higher in a healthy fat content and portion size, portion size. All right. Portion sizing is so important. And before we get into actually how to go ahead and do these portion sizing and actually eat the right way that we're going to shed pounds quickly, let's continue talking a little bit about this insulin response. So we've discussed insulin, and why it's bad for you to spike it up like that and then have it drop back down, spike it up, have it drop back down. And another reason why it's bad for you to spike it up and drop it back down constantly is because at some point your body's going to sit there and say, well, like, wait a minute, we're always doing this. Why don't we just say, fuck it with this insulin shit? And why don't we create a new baseline up here? Right. So that's how you get like an insulin response that's not health, um, insulin sensitivity or whatever you want to call it. So it's really not a good thing to mess with it so much. You want to try to stay away from spiking those levels too much. Instead, you want to try to keep your insulin levels fairly, fairly baseline. All right. So when you eat, your insulin spikes a little bit, and then it drops back down. But when you eat crap, it spikes a lot, and then it drops back down. Try to not spike it a lot. Try to spike it a little bit. Now, let's get into some of the fad diets out there, like high-fat, low-carb. But Will, you just told me that like if I eat a high-fat diet, I'm not spiking my insulin a lot. Isn't that good? Like, Yes, that's absolutely good. Now, the thing about these diet plans or these, these diets that we hear about is what they don't typically tell you is they will work. They will work. High fat, low carb works well, but you are meant to cycle off of them. You can't sit there and for the rest of your life, just eat nothing but high fat foods and expect for that to always work for you. It'll work for a month. It might work for two months. You don't know until you try, but at some point that will stop working for you. And um, you can sit there and eat, you know, chili with sour cream and cheddar cheese in it um as long as you're portion sizing it and that's going to be that's going to be fine honestly for a while and you're not having any carbs with it like you'll probably start to lose some weight with that but at some point you're going to find more than likely that that stops working because our body adapts our body adapts that's the way mother nature intended it like when you go out in the sun what happens first you start to get a suntan or if you're like me, you just fucking burn. But like usually you get a suntan and that's the body's way of adapting to the sun so that you don't fucking die of a third degree burn. Like, likewise, with any diet, your body will eventually adapt to that diet, get used to it, and it will not work anymore. All right. So again, intermittent fast, another quote unquote fad diet. There's a lot of uns... Un Un, there's a lot of uns, whoa, there's a lot of wild speculation rather, when it comes into intermittent fasting. Actually, a lot of these uh, YouTube personalities and stuff that are so keen on intermittent fasting have kind of recently changed, started to change their tune about intermittent fasting because it's really not all it's cracked up to be. What is intermittent fasting actually good for? Well, it's actually good for something called insulin normalization. Insulin normalization. We discussed how the insulin goes like this when you eat junk, this and that. What happens if you don't eat? You don't have any insulin spikes, right? So you don't eat for 18 hours. Your insulin starts to normalize. It comes back here. It goes down to the baseline and it goes, here we are. Oh shit. Okay. Now I'm getting a break. It's like when you crush weights real hard and you go and you, you, you fight and then you go and you run, and then like you do that like two weeks hard, five, six days a week, eventually your body's going to be like, I need a break. 
So you take a couple of days off and your body goes, Oh man, like I'm back to normal. Okay. Like now we can start again and get back into it. Well, the insulin levels are the same way. Sometimes they just need a break. Fasting is a really good way to do that. Stabilize, normalize, get back to baseline. And that's one reason why it's really healthy. Another reason why it kind of sort of works is because you're restricting your calories. If you don't eat for 18 hours and then you give your body a couple of hour window to eat, well, you're only going to be able to eat so much. You might eat one meal. And assuming that meal isn't like a whole pizza, right? Assuming that's like a relatively healthy meal, you're probably not going to be ingesting over 2000 calories in one sitting. Um, <laughs> you know, I say that, but then again, the American portion sizes, the American diet, but more than likely you'll be restricting your calories somewhat if you're doing that. So calorie restriction is really what we're talking about here when it comes to intermittent fasting working. Um, don't get me wrong. Fasting's got incredible health benefits. You know, there's speculation about, uh, cancer fighting, autophagy, and things like this with intermittent fasting. It's very healthy. You actually look at the Middle East, they've done studies uh, where they've got very low cancer rates compared to like Western Western nations. Uh, what do they do in the Middle East? Well, Ramadan, they fast about a month every, every year. I was talking with a cancer doctor. He was saying, well, yeah, but you know, cancer reporting and everything in the Middle East might not be as on par as it is in Europe and America, this and that, valid points, but there is something to it. And there is something to be said for the, the lack of insulin and everything like that. Not saying fasting is not healthy. I'm simply saying if you restrict your calories, you will lose weight. Um, you can restrict your calories by not eating for 16 hours every day. But, but here's the big caveat here. At some point, your body's going to adapt. And what's going to happen? Your, metabol your metabolism is going to really start to shut down because your body says, well, I don't really need to metabolize this stuff. I'm not eating like most of the day. Why do I really need to work? And so it's going to actually start to be counterproductive. Instead, what we want to do is have our metabolism really firing a lot, really working hard. We want our metabolism to be burning up all the time. Like picture a wood-burning stove, right? And it's really hot. What do we do if we take a whole bunch of wood at once and we throw it in there? Smother the fire, right? If we take like a whole log and we throw it in there and then we take like a bunch of freaking, like a whole like armful of kindling and we shove it in there, it's going to, it's going to damp out the fire, right? It's going to smother the fire. But instead, if, you know, if you're a good boy scout and you know about how to, you know, keep a fire going, what do you do? You feed it a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. It's exactly what we want to do when it comes to keeping our metabolism going. As our metabolism is revving, 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 what happens? We're burning that fuel really quickly, all right? So here's the thing, though. If we take a bunch of birch wood, feed it, feed it, feed it, well, the fire is going to love it. It's going to get really hot for a really short amount of time, and then it's going to burn out. We're going to we're not going to have any more fuel eventually, right? But we don't want to put birch wood in there, all right? We want to put things that'll burn slowly. I don't know what word what wood exactly burn slowly. You could probably tell me. I should know this. I was a fireman, but like, whatever. You want to put high quality, slow burning wood in there. So again, remember what we said about the insulin response. If we eat small meals, this is what we're talking about, by the way, utilizing the furnace as an example, as a metaphor, to taking small meals and eating them throughout the day. This is going to keep our metabol metabolism revved up, but we have to be careful what these meals contain, the nutrition that these meals contain. Because again, remember we said we want kind of more of a high fat type of thing. Again, high fat, low carb, it works, but we are our body needs carbs as well, especially if we're working out, especially if we're working hard. So we can't go on like an ultra high fat, low carb diet. We need some carbs. Now, we really want to feed this fire with the right type of fuel. So healthy protein, healthy fats, right? We're talking chicken breast. We're talking lean steak. We're talking stuff that has fat in it, but not too much. 
So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that. And what I like to do, and here's really how this thing works, is we eat about six smaller meals a day. We do three fairly good-sized portions of food and then three very small portions of food. And when we eat, we don't really want to eat anything bigger than our fist at one time. So what does that look like? Well, for breakfast, maybe we have a couple of eggs, a piece of low glycemic index toast or a small bowl of oatmeal. When I'm saying small bowl, I'm saying a small bowl, like small bowl of oatmeal. Um, and with that oatmeal, we want to put what? We want to put some fat there. So maybe we put a little bit of milk in there or something like that, right? We want to negate that insulin spike with a little bit of fat. So putting a little bit of milk in there, not a bad idea. Um, again, whole eggs, what do those have in it? They have good fats in them. Aside for that, nutrients that contain hormones that our body can utilize and make testosterone. Testosterone also helps you burn fat, helps you stay young, helps you stay lean. Testosterone is like the miracle drug of them all. So we have some eggs, maybe a little bit of carbs and maybe a little bit of fruit, right? That's breakfast. Then a couple of hours later, our body should have digested it. By the way, about two to three hours after we eat, our body should be finished digesting. Boom, we're going to hit it again. We're going to hit it with a very small meal of protein. Uh, that could look like uh, another half a chicken breast, or that could look like, you know, if you're if you're lifting weights, maybe a protein shake with a couple of almonds, right? Again, we want to negate the insulin response from that protein shake. So we put a little, little bit of fat with it. Then for lunch, we're going to have some lean protein, all right? We don't really need any more carbs unless we're really working out hard. So maybe we just have some chicken or some fish or some lean protein of your choice, turkey, whatever that is. Um, again, we don't want to really eat any portion size of this meat bigger than our fish. So we're going to have a little bit of that. Maybe we have some vegetables on the side, right? Bell peppers, asparagus, broccoli, not a huge heaping portion, but, you know, a decent amount, right? So we have some of that, maybe just a small salad on the side. We do that. So three hours after breakfast, we have a snack. Two hours after that snack, we have a meal. Three hours after that meal, we have another small snack, hard-boiled egg, maybe even some beef jerky, whatever. Not a whole bag, but a little bit, right? Some good protein. Then we're going to have for dinner, again, some more lean protein that's going to be Whatever your choice is, could be a steak, you know, again, no bigger than our fist. That's going to be a piece of fish. That's going to be chicken, pork chop, whatever, as long again, as it's no bigger than our fist. And I want you to make sure and prioritize, oh, does it have fat? Is it fatty? Whatever, man. If it's no bigger than your fist, a little bit of fat in there is not going to be that terrible for us. And then again, three hours after that, Right around the time, a little bit before we go to bed, we're going to have maybe another egg, maybe another whatever, a small snack. We can drift off to sleep, repair ourselves, repair our muscle fiber tears, all of that. This is an old school bodybuilding diet, guys, and this really works. And I'm telling you, if you can eat throughout the day in small portion sizes, no bigger than your fist for the main meal, and a little bit of vegetables or salad on the side, again, not a lot of dressing on that shit, please. This will really work for you. And it's negating the insulin response. It's taking the insulin out of this, right? The only time you're really spiking your insulin is in the morning with those carbs. Now, in the afternoon, if you're doing a lot of activity, like maybe you're doing a lot of weightlifting, maybe you're going to go to jujitsu later and burn, you know, like seven, eight, nine hundred calories, you know, have a sandwich, right? Have a, have a, have a small sandwich. But again, Let's make that a small sandwich, no bigger than our fist. So if we need to have some low glycemic index bread with it, like sourdough, that's fine. Um, Ezekiel bread is an absolute lifesaver. It's got natural grains in it, it's low glycemic index. We just don't want to have all of that bread with the preservatives in it. Even if it's whole wheat bread, we don't want preservatives in it, right? So we have bread that's no preservatives and low glycemic index like sourdough like whole wheat bread, the darker, the better, right? If you can follow this diet plan, 
And again, it doesn't need to be exact. You don't need to be sitting there counting out your blueberries like I used to do in order to lose vast amounts of fat. Um, it could only aid you further if you get obsessive with that. Like I was on a very strict bodybuilding diet and I was counting my macros and all of that bullshit in order to really shed fat real quick. But again, I was trying to balance that and not do too much cardio, put on more muscle, this and that. Classic bodybuilding style. You don't need to do that. I I can't promise anything, but I'm pretty sure that if you follow this type of diet or this type of eating, you'll be very happy with it. You're going to start to see your waist shrinking. You're going to start to need to get new pants or put on old pants that you've had before that you didn't fit in for a while. This is the secret, guys. I just told you the whole freaking secret. And I really, I hope that you can look into this for yourself. There are some really good uh, old bodybuilders that talk about nutrition. I'll link them here below. And as far as the uh, a lot of the fad diets and stuff go, you see a plethora of these people on YouTube talking about fast and talking about the carnivore diet. And again, I said we'd get into that. I didn't really discuss it. Um, look, I don't know too, too much about the carnivore diet. I suspect that eating nothing but red meat is not very healthy. Now, I've got a friend Having said that, who is a doctor, I've got a friend who's a doctor, and he said that he thinks it's great. But again, your body will adapt to whatever diet that you go on. Now, I know that Joe Rogan's had people on to talk about the carnivore diet, aiding them in, you know, immune responses and stuff like that, curing diseases. Look, again, I'm not a doctor. I know a little bit about nutrition, but I don't know enough about that to really, really, really talk on it, whether it's good or bad. Personally, I suspect that for me, eating nothing but red meat, I just feel like that's asking for nothing good. But if you're doing it and it's working for you and you like it, hey, more power to you. Awesome. Let me know down in the comments below, you know, why and what you think that's about. I'd love to know more about it. But I do know that as far as the fad diets go, your body's going to adapt to all that stuff. This, what I'm talking about here, your body it's going to have a hard time adapting to it. It really is. Especially if you have a cheat meal every now and again. I said a cheat meal, not a cheat day. But cheat meals are actually a really good thing. So if you go out once, maybe even twice a week, and you have a freaking hamburger, right? You have whatever your guilty pleasure is. Some pizza, you know, a chicken parm, whatever that is. Actually, it's going to keep your body guessing. All right, I'm itching because I got like poison ivy all over myself here. So that's I'm not I'm not I'm not Hunter Biden over here. All right. Anyway, um, it actually cheat meals help your body because it helps with the counter the adaptation process that will uh, that will eventually occur. Now, like I said, with this eating small meals, many small meals throughout the day of lean protein and stuff like that, it's very hard for your body to adapt. But it's even harder if every now and again. You make it freaking wildly guess by ingesting more calories than it needs. If Monday, Tuesday, you eat clean, Wednesday, you have one cheat meal, and then Thursday, Friday, you eat clean again, well, like your body's not going to know, like, wait, what's going on? What's going on? I have to, I have to, I have to figure this out. It's guessing, right? You want to shock your body a little bit, keep it guessing. Maybe one day of the week, randomly, you do intermittent fast. And your body goes, what's going on here? I'm shocked. And then from that shock, it goes back. It kind of resets. That's where intermittent fasting can really help out. So cheat meals, intermittent fasting done very sparingly can actually be a fine thing as well uh, and a very healthy thing. Listen, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I'm not going to wildly speculate anything. I know this process works. If you want to know more about this type of stuff, if you are curious we do have warrior weight loss, and that's A to B to Z steps that I took to lose all the weight. You can find that on gutterfightingsecrets.com. It's our audio book. It's on there. I recommend it. Um, check it out. Look, if you're not satisfied at the end with the with the book, uh, let me know. All right, we'll talk. I don't offer money back guarantees. I don't do it. But if you write me and you legitimately tell me you didn't like it and why, and if you listen to the whole thing and you can literally tell me and like why, anyway. Damn it. I shouldn't have said that. Don't worry about it. Just go and buy the book. No, I really do think that you'll like it though. So check that out if you're interested. I really hope that this has helped you um, in any way possible because it's absolutely possible for you to lose all the weight. 
Like it really is. I don't care how old you are. I don't care anything. Like it's entirely possible for you to do it. The big step is having discipline and taking that first step. If you get a month into this way of living, you will more than likely succeed. And I can tell you that honestly. It's hard to get started, but once you're started, it's easy to stay on it and see it all the way through. So, guys, until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, Mother Flowers. Oh, by the way, on the weekend, we're pointing out some more hand-to-hand combatus tactics. Cheers, guys.